Hey, welcome back to another video by Morales. My name is Bharat and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can build your own revoke.cache clone using Morales, Tailwind CSS and React.js. So let's get started. Like you can see from my screen, this is what we're going to be building in today's tutorial. And this is a clone of revoke.cache. If you're not aware of revoke.cache, Revoke.cache is basically a platform that lets you paste a given wallet address, see what are all the approvals present in that wallet address. And if it's your wallet address, you can connect your wallet and you'll basically be able to do a revoke transaction, letting you revoke your wallet token approvals. So before we get into uh, building this, let's first actually just try to understand what exactly are token approvals, if you're unfamiliar with that. And uh, let's then go into the ERC20 to understand this. So ERC20 is a common standard that's used for fungible tokens. Like you can see here, uh, this is the uh, EIP proposal of the ERC20 standard. And this basically talks about what is the uh, ERC20 standard and what are all the methods that should be present in that standard. Like you can basically see this standard was for the implementation for creating fungible tokens. And by maintaining a standard, you can basically have applications that follow the same uniform format. And like you can see here, this kind of specifies what are all the functions that should be present in this ERC20 token contract. And you are basically able to see all of this. So we're going to go into Open Zeppelin now, and we're going to have a look at the documentation to understand more about the ERC20 token standard and what are all the functions in it. So ERC20 basically provides us with the uh, fungible token standard for uh, creating and uh, managing your ERC20 tokens. And basically, as you can see here, uh, these are all the functions which are present in this. And the functions that we are particularly interested in are approved and allowance because that's what is related to our token approvals. So if you go into approve, you can basically see that Whenever you are building an application that's leveraging ERC20 tokens and that's driven by smart contracts, you would need to leverage approve and transfer from functions because uh, transfer from lets you pull a token from a wallet address to a given contract versus uh, transfer, which is just to push it. So if you are the caller, then you can basically call transfer function and move it to move your tokens to another account. But if you are basically building an application, a DeFi app, etc., that time your smart contract is going to be interacting with the ERC20 token that you are planning to support. And that time you would have to require integrating these two functions, approve and transfer from. And what approve basically does is it lets you approve your uh, use case smart contract, which could be a DeFi application, lending platform, etc to consume or pull your tokens, which you have in your wallet. So when you are approving a given address as a spender, you're setting an amount and this basically edits and uh, the allowance values within the smart contract. And that allowance values basically keep track of for any given wallet address, what is the amount that a spender can spend. So this is what basically is present in the approve function of the uh, smart contract and every time an approve function is called it emits an approval event as well and if you look at the allowances you can basically see right here it's a function that takes the owner and spender and it basically returns how much of the owner's tokens is the spender authorized to use so uh, typically in any platform or application like uniswap or sushi swap etc whenever you want to swap your tokens it's going to ask you to approve the dex smart contract first in order to take the tokens from you and for that it's going to call this function particularly approve and one thing is since this is a transaction that happens on the blockchain it's going to consume a certain amount of gas so typically what various platforms do is in order to not keep asking the user's approval every time it's going to ask you to just approve a huge amount at once so that whenever the user wants to transfer or use a DeFi application, they don't have to keep approving the uh, smart contract of the DeFi application to use it. So this basically brings benefits in terms of the gas cost, but it definitely does 
bring like risks in terms of smart contract security because when you approve a malicious smart contract or let's say mm-hmm. due to some reason the contract gets hacked they have the ability to pull your balances from your wallet and that is basically how much of a balance you have if you want approved an unlimited amount then they could basically take all your balance as well if it's a malicious smart contract or if there's ever an exploit on the contract and this has happened before as well so what's really important in standard practice to do is to always keep track of what your approvals are and ensure that you always have it revoked and uh, that's why such platforms like revoke.cash exist because they let you put in your wallet address and easily revoke the uh, approvals which are basically present and the process of revoking an approval is nothing but just setting the uh, spender address and setting the approval value to zero so and like you can basically see from here these are all the events which are uh, emitted whenever there is a function that's called and uh, one such event is an approval event whenever the allowance is basically set by approve because every time you call approve it's going to set the allowance values and every time the allowance values etc are set this is emitting the approval event similarly if you want to revoke that uh, particular uh, smart contract address etc you're just going to call the approve function and you're going to pass the spender if you look at the approve you're going to pass the spender and you're going to call it uh, set it to zero so when you set it to zero it's actually equal to revoke because then the smart contract cannot uh, call the transfer from because the check would fail it would check whether the allowance is present and uh, if there's no allowance then it's not going to be able to take it and by default the allowance value is set to zero so let's get into the platform and try to understand uh, what we're doing here so in order to use the platform you can basically just paste any given wallet address or ens domain and for all of this we're going to use morales api in order to get all the relevant information like you can basically see here for this wallet address, it's showing you the ENS domain, what's the uh, ETH balance, that is the native balance, and what's the USD value of this. What are all the approvals which are present? So you can basically see the approvals, how much is the approved amount, and value at risk. So value at risk represents the USD value at risk. Example, you could basically see uh, the amount can basically, since this is USDC, you can see that the values are same. But if the approved amount is in Ether, then the value at risk basically is equal to the approved amount times the price of the ether in usd and our api that is the token approvals api gives you all that data in just one api call so you can basically build this in just one call you get the entire user balances how much is the approved amount how much is the value at risk who is the approved spender so you can also see in case the approved spender has an entity associated to it you will also see the entity name so here you can see that usdc's uh, approved spender is actually one inch over here because i've used one inch and i've approved uh, one inch to spend my usdc like that you can see curve.fi which is another dex for stable coins and then you can see polygon bridge you can see stargate which is another protocol so all of the approved spender the value at risk is present and last updated basically shows us when this was last updated so if you have performed a token approval or etc when was that time you had approved it and you have all these features and here's the actions that lets you revoke it so you also have the ability to again filter so if you want to sort it by asset name you can basically sort it all by the asset name you can see the value at risk from low to high so zero and then you can see as you go down it goes higher and uh, you basically have the last updated all these filters we're going to see how you can build this as well for your own uh, application and you can again filter between showing everything showing just the approvals which are unlimited if you want to revoke those or set it to a definite value and then you can also see show limited values which will show you all the limited approvals so this is what you can basically see in this particular platform and uh, now to get started with building this let's actually learn more about morales and uh, create an account to get started so to do that you can just access morales portal which is available at uh, developers.morales.com once you've come here you can basically see that morales is the web3 data platform and like you can see here you have rpc infrastructure apis for dex tokens wallets etc letting you build any sort of solutions that you want to so to get started just go into login 
and get into the platform once you have logged into the platform you'll be able to see your dashboard and your dashboard shows you everything you need to know in terms of the documentation the compute unit usage etc and you can see your api key right here as well just copy your api key and then you can go back uh, head to our documentation which is available at docs.morales.io and uh, it's also there in the hyperlink here so if you want to directly go there you could just go into docs.morales.io go into the wallet api section and then get wallet token approvals so once you're in the get wallet token approvals you can see that it says you can retrieve all the active erc20 token approvals for the specified wallet address and for this let's basically try this out with our wallet address so i'm just going to copy the wallet address here go back to this and paste the address let's also take the api key again i have the api key right here go back and uh, paste it over here once you've done that you'll see that we have the code snippets let's basically try out the curl code snippet so copy the curl snippet and let's basically open our terminal to try this out so i'm gonna do that so let me just open another terminal one second okay so now we have a new window and what we're gonna do is we're gonna open our code snippet right here and like you can see this is the curl command that we use and if you look at the api what's actually happening the url you're hitting is deep index morales and we're calling it with approvals and chain equal to eth specifies that we're trying to retrieve the approvals on ethereum mainnet so you can again go through the drop down to fetch approvals on any of the supported networks after that you can see here that in the header you're passing the api key and the address for which we're trying to retrieve the approvals is also present right here which is basically my wallet address so once you have done that you can basically just run it and you'll be able to see the response like you can basically see from this response this fetches all of the approval data in just one api call and again this is a paginated endpoint so you could keep paginating between uh, all the approvals in case you have your wallet has a huge number of approvals and this is what we are particularly interested in the result basically contains what we need and it contains the block number at which the approval happened the timestamp of the approval the transaction hash the value which we have approved so here you can see it's a huge value which basically indicates that it's an unlimited uh, approval then you can see the address which is the epns that is the ethereum push notification service contract then you can see the symbol the push and you can see the logo the token logo as well which we are displaying in our application like right here all of that is there then you can see whether it's a possible spam if it's a spam contract sometimes you might have contracts which are <clears throat> fully spam contracts so you can also see whether the contract is spam or not and you also can see whether the contract is verified status the current balance the current balance indicates the user's balance if these push tokens usd price represents the price of this token so right now what's the price of this token and usd at risk represents how much usd is basically at risk in case there was an exploit etc at this contract so usd at risk basically is equal to always the approved amount uh, so if you look at the approved uh, value you can basically see the spender is right here and the value is basically present right here so the value times the usd price gives you the usd at risk and you can see the spender etc so this is how the response looks like and uh, this is what we are basically showing in our ui as well so with this api you are able to get all the token approvals along with all the transaction details as well of the approval and we are showing all of that data to build this uh, kind of application so what we're going to do next is we're just going to try to dive into the code over here and see what are all the functionalities and apis that we are calling so one api that we are calling is basically for resolving the domain because when i paste my wallet address it's able to get my ens domain associated to it and for that you can again head to morales docs and if you go into the wallet api section you can see right here we have an api called get wallet domains and we're using two apis to get the ens domain by address and get the address by ens domain so whenever user's wallet address is pasted we are getting the domain and in case he pastes his wallet uh, domain itself you're going to call the domain to address api and we're going to then use that response to call the token approvals api 
So that's how the uh, domain resolution works over here. We are also calling a separate API in order to fetch the user's native token balance along with the USD value of that native token, which is also present. And the total approvals and total value at risk is again the sum of all the individual value at risk for each and every token. And total approvals is just the count of how many approvals we have right here. So this is what we are actually doing to uh, showcase everything in terms of the UI perspective. So now to get started in actually building this, let's head to the React.js code and uh, understand what the code is doing. So if you see right here, uh, you'll notice that there is an uh, env.example file. So if you're following along, you can just clone the repo and uh, set the env based on the env.example file, create a .env and paste it with your Morales API key. You can basically get your Morales API key straight from our dashboard. If you've already created an account, this is your API key. And uh, once you've gotten that, you're all set. You can basically head to app.js. That's where all of our major code is. And now let's actually try to understand certain uh, functions. So we have this function that's called uh, resolve ENS to address. And what this function is actually doing is it's going to call the Morales API and it's going to take the ENS domain as an input and it's going to fetch the actual address associated to that domain and it's going to set that into our state variables. So you can basically see we have a state variable called resolved address and domain and we are basically setting that directly. Uh, the next call is to resolve address to ENS. This again just calls the re reverse resolution API and it's going to again set the ENS domain with the given wallet address. So these are just the domain resolution APIs coming to the one which we are uh, focusing on that is this fetch token approvals and as you can see here we're making an api call to uh, get this approvals and we're getting the api key straight from the env so if you've already created a dot env and pasted your key you should be all good and once you have done that you can see the uh, response which is coming and from the response we are parsing it and we are basically setting the entire response as well so you can basically see the data dot result array is basically set in the approvals uh, state variable, which is an array. So that's how the approvals are fetched and they're set. The next API call to Morales is to fetch the native balance like I was mentioning. So you can basically see the native balance which we are showing right here along with the ether value and the USD price. That's obtained by calling this particular API. And here we are calling the uh, chain equal to eth tokens API. So if you want to see that API in the docs, you can just head here, get to get wallet token balances and get native and ERC20 token balances. So this is our all-in-one token API. And if you want to get your ERC20 token balances, native token balances, you can just call this API and it also tells you the USD value of your uh, position, how it's the USD price, how much is the percentage change, etc. So if you're building like uh, wallet portfolio applications, token explorers, etc. You can directly use this API to leverage that. And we are using this API right here to fetch the balance and show the USD value. So going back to our code base, you can basically see we have our function here, which is handle search. And as soon as the user puts enter, if the user has entered an ENS domain in the search box, we have a function to check whether it's an ENS domain or not by checking if it ends with ETH. And if it is, we are resolving it to ENS and from address. And if it's not, if it's an address, then you're going to resolve it to ENS so that we can show that as well. So after all that is done, you can see we are calling the fetch approvals and fetch native balance API in order to fetch the approvals and the balances. And we have a threshold value as well here. You can see that we have a check unlimited amount function that's going to check uh, if the approved amount is greater than a given threshold, it's going to pass uh, show the data here as unlimited and that is so that we know what are all unlimited as well you can definitely play around by changing this threshold value and you have the sort approval functions which is not uh, nothing but sorting all of these based on the api response fields so if you look at sort you have the uh, newest to oldest based on the date then you have oldest to newest the approved amount the value at risk and the asset from a to z etc so that's on the sorting and then you have the filter approvals which is basically in terms of showing whether you want to show everything whether you want to show limited or unlimited values and this is also just 
going to manipulate the uh, array of approvals in order to fetch those values and after that we are sorting it based on the filter condition and once that is basically done you can basically uh, see that it'll all be shown in our UI then you have a connect wallet function and this is where we are making use of ethers js in order to connect to our wallet so this uses ethers v6 and I, as you can see here we are using ethers.browser provider to trigger metamask whenever connect wallet is clicked and it's going to get the address resolve the address to ens in case there's any and then it's going to set all those values into our state so then you have the revoke approval feature which is this one that we're going to see as well and whenever you click revoke it's actually going to call the contract on ETH mainnet and it's basically going to pass the token contract address and this is the ABI of the approve as you can see it shows us what's the structure of approve it has the spender and amount and we are up, uh, sending we're setting the approval status of the spender as zero and that basically means the allowance is set to zero directly which means the uh, use case contract cannot steal any of your tokens beyond the uh, amount which is basically again set to zero so it can't do anything so that's on the revoke approval function and everything else is just the uh, HTML values which you can see the uh, table itself. So we have used Tailwind to just style everything and as you can basically see here we have the native balances, the shortened addresses because if we show the entire address it will occupy the entirety of the table and uh, as you can see we have all of the details present and this is the part where the table is actually implemented. And here we are basically iterating over the approvals mapping uh, array in order to fetch the uh, in order to map the approvals into the to table elements. So what's actually happening over here is the approvals, which is sorted based on our conditions, that is the sort and the filter, is going to be mapped into individual table rows, as you can see right here. Each table row has its own uh, table data column, etc and all of that is basically present right here. We are accessing the values within the approvals array and like you remember from our response in the API, you can see right here that our response contains these fields. So if you want to uh, access the token details, you've got to go into approvals dot token dot and then access that. And if you want to uh, get the spender details, you're going to go into the spender variable. So everything is basically accessed from here. And as you can see, we are going into approval.token.currentbalance formatted and we're getting direct formatted values and uh, after that if it's uh, based on an unlimited amount we're going to show the detail uh, as unlimited in terms of the approved values and uh, that's basically what's happening over here we have the address that's present the spender of address as well along with all the copy to clipboard so that we could copy and that's basically it when the button is basically clicked in the, in the action you can see it basically calls the revoke approval function and the revoke approval function again just calls the token contract itself with the approve function and sets the spender as zero so now we can basically test the uh, approve function but before that let's actually just try to see this particular contract itself on uh, etherscan so now that i've copied this what we can do is we can just open etherscan and uh, once you have opened up etherscan let's basically paste the wallet address and you can basically see right here this is the contract of uh, so this is the contract of the one inch dex as you can basically see here and we have approved this aggregation route of e6 contract in order to perform a swap while we had used one inch but uh, since the value is set to unlimited it means that if there is an exploit then we will basically lose our uh, funds so what we're going to do now is we're going to revoke this particular uh, contract and you can do that by just clicking on revoke and this is going to trigger our metamask and like you can basically see what's happening in this uh, metamask you can see that it's saying you're going to revoke this pending cap and uh, the fees for this is basically 0.3 and if you look at what exactly you're revoking, you can also verify that over here. In USDC, we are revoking the spending cap for this particular address. So now you can again see the data field that also shows us what's the function data we are calling. And let's click on approve. And this is going to actually set the approval to zero. So let's wait for this transaction to get mined. 
let's view this on block explorer so like you can see this transaction is basically completed and you can see that the revoke usdc is complete and we can see the hash as well so that's essentially how you can uh, build your own uh, token approvals application like revoke.cash in order to revoke your token approvals using Morales. And you can basically see how Morales API makes it really easy in order to fetch the token approvals, fetch the balances and everything in just one API call. So that's how you can leverage Morales to build your own revoke.cash and you'll basically find the link to the uh, React application in the description. So you could directly clone the repository follow the nvidia example and you'll be able to run this application uh, feel free to reach out in case you have any questions about uh, integration of the api or any doubts in general and if you did enjoy this video feel free to give it a like and subscribe to our channel so that you can see more of our videos so thank you for uh, watching our video and hope to see you on the next one